recently watched King Corn, a documentary filmed in 2007 by Aaron Wolf. In it, two recent college grads go to visit a biochemist who informs them that by examining a lock of their hair, he can tell people what they have eaten. When he examines their hair, he tells them they are made of corn. They then go to a grocery store where they realize that nearly every item has corn product in it. So they decide to rent an acre of land in a cornfield in Iowa and follow the process to see what happens to their corn. The first thing they find out they need to do is to register their acre of land with the Food Administration of the U.S. government. Once there, they are told that they will be paid $28 for that acre for growing corn. That's before they've even done a thing. They are then told that they need to fertilize the land and that ammonia will be the best thing to increase the yield. No magnesium, no iron, no nitrogen, just ammonia. And no discussion of nutritional value, just how to maximize the yield. Then they are sold seeds. These seeds have been genetically modified to again produce a higher yield. They are genetically modified by chemical companies to be resistant to the herbicides that they're going to use later to kill weeds. Again, all for trying to increase yield and grow the maximum amount of corn. So a chemical company sells them genetically modified seeds so that the chemical company can sell them the herbicide later. See a trend? Then through the course of the movie, we see the corn start to grow. Once the corn gets big enough, the guys decide to try it and they're surprised to find out that this corn that they're growing doesn't taste very good. They then learn that their corn isn't going to be served at the dinner table. It's going to be used for other things, such as cattle feed, production of corn sweeteners, and of course, ethanol for our cars. On their one acre of land, they expect to grow 10,000 pounds of corn. Roughly a third of that will be used for ethanol production. Some of it will be used for corn sweetener, and over half of it, nearly 5,500 pounds will be used for feed for livestock. It turns out that today's beef cattle are fed 60% corn product. Industrialized cattle farms feed their cattle primarily corn products for six months before slaughter. If they don't slaughter them after six months, they're probably gonna die anyways because their health is so bad from eating the corn. U.S. cattle use 70% of the antibiotics consumed in America that antibiotics is what keeps them alive while they're eating that corn diet. We then learn that because of the surplus of corn production that started in the 1970s, corn syrup was developed as an inexpensive way to sweeten food and food products. High fructose corn syrup is the primary sweetener in U.S. products because it's cheap, which keeps food pricing down. In the last 30 years, the consumption of sweeteners has gone up 30% primarily because of high fructose corn syrup. The filmmakers learn that their acre of corn will have little to no nutritional value in the marketplace. 70% of corn sweeteners go to beverages like soda. Drinking one soda a day doubles the risk of type two diabetes. Just as a side note, we used to call it adult onset diabetes, but because children are getting it in increasing numbers, they now refer to it as type two diabetes. So our filmmakers are told that if they go to McDonald's or other fast food restaurants, basically they're eating corn. The beef or chicken that they're eating have all been fed corn meal. The sodas that they're drinking are all sweetened with corn sweeteners, and even the french fries that they're eating have all been cooked in corn oil. After growing their corn, our filmmakers find out that the costs for production, renting the land, the equipment that they use, the seeds and fertilizer, adds up to $350. Then when they figure based on the greatest amount of yield and the highest pricing, the best they can hope to make is $330 or a loss of $20. They are then reminded that they were paid $28 by the government when they registered their land. They're also told that there are a number of other subsidies that will be coming their way that will make it profitable. So basically, Without government intervention, they lose $20 on that acre. So our government is creating a scenario of readily available, low cost, unhealthy food. As one man says in the movie, 
Our government subsidizes Happy Meals, not the healthy ones. The filmmakers are told that our generation spends the least percentage of income on food. As I watched this, I thought, yeah, but our generation spends the highest percentage on healthcare costs. In the end, their acre of corn is taken to the grain elevator where it is dumped onto a giant mountain of corn waiting to be transported and processed. I did find this movie very educational. I learned a lot about what goes into different products and how much corn infiltrates our lives. I definitely will pay more attention at the grocery store and keep an eye out for different corn products. Hope this review was helpful. Go out and watch this movie for yourself and let me know what you thought. Make sure you check out my other reviews on my website, realwholetruth.com, as well as the Twitter and Facebook pages. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this informative. Stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>